Interest can be a big part of life after high school, like interest on a car, or mortgage and student loans, or interest on savings accounts. So maybe it's not surprising that the SAT would want you to know about calculating interest. In this action-packed lesson, we're going to look at interest rates and the ways they might appear on the SAT. Interest is the amount it costs to borrow money or occasionally other things. As you might know, if you take out a loan from a bank, you have to pay the money back with interest, meaning you'll pay back more than you borrowed. There's a tiny bit of vocab that will be helpful here. Principal is the amount being borrowed. Let's start with simple interest. If you borrow $100 at 6% interest, the $100 is your principal. You'll have to pay all of the principal, the full $100 back, plus an additional 6% of the principal. We can express 6% as a decimal, 0 0.06, and we know that the principal is $100. So our repayment equation will be 100 plus 0 0.06 times 100, which means you will pay back $106. Not so hard, right? But most interest in life and most interest questions on the SAT won't be quite so simple. Instead, you're likely to see compound interest. Compound interest requires the borrower to pay interest not only on the principal, but also on the other interest that has been accumulated. For example, let's say you deposit $100 into your savings account at the bank and get 3% interest compounded yearly. That would mean the first year you would earn 3% interest on your principal. We can write this equation as 100 plus 0 0.03 times 100. So you would earn $3 on the $100 you deposited. At the end of the first year, you would have $103. Now here's where the compound interest thing gets good. The second year, you would earn interest on the $100 you originally deposited, but you would also earn interest on the $3 interest you earned in the first year. So we would have 100 plus $3 plus 3% 3 of $100 plus 3% of $3. So at the end of the second year, you would have $103 plus an additional $3.09 earned in interest, which means you would now have $106.09 in the bank. If you left your money in the bank, you would start earning more and more money off the interest. There's a formula for basic compound interest that's helpful to know. The money you will earn or owe in the future equals the principal times 1 plus the interest rate in decimal form to the number of periods of interest. We can just simplify that last part as n. In the previous example, we deposited $100 at 3% interest, so we would write 100 times 1 plus 0 0.03 to the n. We can simplify that a bit to 100 times 1.03 to the n. Now let's say we want to know how much we would have after two years. Well, we would make n equal to 2. 1.03 squared is 1.0609 and 100 times 1.0609 is 106.09. So in two years, we would have $106.09, exactly what we determined previously. If we wanted to know how much money we would have in five years, we would change n to 5. And if we wanted to know how much money we would have in 12 years, we would change n to 12. Not all compound interest in the world can be calculated with this basic formula. Some financial models can get much more complex, but understanding this formula should have you well prepared for any interest problems you might encounter on the SAT. Now let's take a look at a question similar to what you might see on the SAT. Two years ago, George opened a bank account that pays 2.5% interest compounded annually. He has not made any additional contributions to the account and has not withdrawn any money. If the account balance is currently $250, how much money did he initially deposit? The answer choices are A, $237.95, B, $243.90, C, $256.25, and D, $262.66. As we always do, we'll start by underlining the facts, circling the key words, and labeling the answer choices. Since we see the words interest compounded in this question, let's write out the compound interest formula. The money you will earn or owe in the future equals the principal times 1 plus the interest rate in decimal form to the number of periods of interest. Now that we have that, let's start filling in info. We know the interest rate is 2.5%. Expressed as a decimal, that's 0 0.025. And we know the money has been in the account for two years, so the number of periods of interest is 2. 
We're trying to find out the amount of money George initially deposited. That's the principal. Let's call that P. And we know that after two years of interest, he has $250. So let's write that in the future money side. A quick bit of addition gives us 250 equals P times 1.025 squared. And that's our equation. Now it just comes down to a little bit of algebra. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing the algebra, you can back solve. Let's practice the algebra this time, but we'll use our calculator to help. 1.025 squared is 1.050625. We'll divide both sides by that to solve for P. And we get 250 over 1.050625 equals P, which equals $237.95, or answer choice A. Great work. Remember the formula and you'll be in good shape for any interest question that might come your way. Even better, this compound interest formula can also be used for other things. For example, population. Let's take a look. If the city of Nairobi, Kenya is projected to have a 5.8% population growth per year over the next 10 years, and the population is currently 3.5 million, what will the population be 10 years from now? We're not talking about money, but let's take a look at our compound interest formula and see how we can make it work here. We can change future dollars to future population, principal to current population, interest rate to rate of growth, and the number of periods of interest to the number of years of growth, but we can keep that abbreviated with an N. Now let's fill in some numbers. The current population is 3.5 million. The rate of growth is 5.8%, which we can write as the decimal 0 .058, and we want 10 years of growth. One last bit of addition, and now we've got our equation all lined up and ready to go. Let's take out our calculator and solve this thing. And there we have it. At the given rate of population increase, Nairobi's population will be over 6.15 million in 10 years. We've learned a lot about compound interest in this lesson, and we even learned how to use the compound interest formula for things other than interest. It's a useful formula for the SAT and for life, so learn it and practice it. You can start with some of the hundreds of sample questions available in this course.